scientists are recreating Otzi the Iceman's voice in a bid to discover how people spoke 5,000 years ago. Well, it was over 5,000 years ago that Otzi the Iceman met another Stone Age man armed with a bow and arrow, and he saw the end of his life. Well, scientists today still won't leave the Iceman in peace. Since he was found poking out of a glacier 3,000 meters up in the Italian Alps in 1991, the Iceman has proven to be a wealth of knowledge, a wealth of information about human life in the Neolithic period. Now, researchers in Italy are attempting to recreate his voice box. They're going to construct a model of his vocal tract with CT scans. Yes, they are getting the world's oldest mummy to speak, and it's going to be just so that they can find out how we sounded back then. Uh, pretty incredible stuff here. Sure. They think they can do this in a matter of months. Wow. So they're not far away at all. There are a few problems, let me just uh, start okay. by saying, with recreating a 5,000-year-old mummy's voice. Uh, well, first of all, they can't use MRI techniques because of the condition of the mummified body. So they've taken to CT scans. The position of his body, though, is also presenting some problems. His arm actually goes right across his throat, so it's making the CT scanning of his vocal cords, of his, of his vocal tract, much more difficult. But they've already done DNA sequencing of mm -hmm. the Iceman. He, at the moment, rests in a sterile glass box at 7 degrees centigrade uh, in 100% humidity in Italy. And they definitely believe that, despite all these problems, they will be able to recreate uh, the voice and reproduce the color and timbre of his vowel sounds and show just how he made his vowel movements and compare it to how we speak today. Well, yeah, so it, just to be clear, they're not gonna try and recreate language. They're, they're not gonna be able to discern language, but to see your point, just the, the tone and the, the depth of his voice or, or, or quite where he, it was. How he makes the vowels sound. Wow, so, so how he shapes. actually articulated. That's extraordinary, that will give us a lot of information about the development of language and how obviously the hope is that at some point there will be some kind of discernible language that he will be making rather than just grunts and groans. Absolutely, and this goes back to ne Neolithian times. Mm. So obviously, uh, the fact that he was found in the Alps, he may well have spoken very differently from people back then in other parts of the world, <laughs> but certainly... Don't expect uh, him to speak fluent <laughs> Italian. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> certainly uh, a wealth of information there. What we know about Otzi so far, though, okay. he was five foot five inches tall. Okay. He weighed about... That's not bad for a 5,000-year-old no. guy. Okay. That's a, pretty, that's a pretty reasonable height, right. actually. Right, he weighed about 59 kilograms. He was very uh, physically physically fit. He wasn't overweight at all. Okay, good. He was about 45 years old when he died, well, which is reasonably old for someone sure. back then, 5,000 years ago. They found him with three broken ribs. They found him, found him with an intestinal parasite whipworm and an ulcer causing an infection of his gut. But here's where it gets interesting. They also found on his body a flint-headed arrow that went through his entire shoulder, rupturing the key blood vessel that flowed blood from his heart to his left arm so effectively oh. they found out that Otzi was murdered and wow. they still won't leave him alone. <laughs> yeah they still want to leave the oh, world as you said the world's oldest natural mummy. He's a thousand years older just to contextualize it he's a thousand years older than any Egyptian mummy that we've that we've got on record that we've that we've discovered rather. So I mean it's quite extraordinary yeah they still won't leave the poor boy poor old boy alone and they're trying to plunder him for as much information as they can. But it is, I mean, it's, uh, that's not what he looked like, but no, it is absolutely fascinating. And if they can recreate this, it will give us that wonderful window into development of language and how we begun, because it doesn't all start with the Flintstones. It wasn't quite, we weren't all running around in, although they did actually, that having been said, they do actually, they've also discovered what he was wearing. Yes. They figured out what he was wearing, right? They have recreated... I don't know how they did that. They've recreated what Otzi was wearing. They've pieced together his attire, or perhaps his typical attire. A goat skin loincloth, leather leggings, a goat skin coat, a cloak of grass stitched together with animal sinews. And now they're going to recreate his voice. <laughs>